What's up outdoorsman Greg here and today we're going to see what happens when a broadhead gets in a fight with your tether. If you've been saddle hunting for a minute and maybe you've shown it to one of your friends, shown it to a hunting buddy, they've all said, what happens if you hit your rope with your broadhead? Well, first of all, that's really difficult to do to hit your rope with your broadhead, but I was really curious on what would happen if you actually hit your rope, your tether, your bridge, something with the broadhead. I want to see what happens. So today we're going to test a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to test some 550 cord. We're going to test uh, a lone wolf strap webbing. We're going to test tubular webbing. We're going to test am steel. We're going to test climbing rope. And we're going to test some stuff that I just went to the hardware store and got because that's what a lot of guys do. They go to Walmart. They go to the hardware store. They grab some, some sturdy looking rope and they say, oh, I'll use this as a tether. Well, we're going to test that stuff and see if it actually will hold up under pressure or under a broadhead. It's kind of difficult to imagine a scenario in which you would actually cut your rope with your broadhead. Um, you know, moving it around, I generally keep my bow right here on the left hand side of the tree. So if I were to pick that up and then move to my left to shoot, which is what I try to do, um, you can see that the arrow never really comes in contact or even anywhere even close to your bow or to your tether, your, your tether or your bridge. So, not really a realistic scenario, but what happens if you gotta shoot on the right-hand side of the tree, right? So the way I would do that is I would, if I'm gonna shoot over here to, to my one o'clock, two o'clock, I would bring it over the bridge like so. Kind of paying attention. Yeah, this is, I guess this is theoretically possible here. I mean, if you weren't watching what you were doing and you were bringing your bow over, you could. I mean, I'm pretty close to my, my tether right there, so. You could theoretically hit that, but you'd have to hit it really hard. I mean, you're not going to cut your tether just by touching it like this with the broadhead. But regardless, so there you go. So that's a potential scenario. The other potential scenario, some guys will come and pass their bow under like so. And you can see that's actually, it does get in the vicinity if you're not paying attention, it does get in the vicinity of your bridge and your tether. So yeah, so that is, it is a possibility that that could happen. Um, the other way guys that hunt from a, a, a pivot style platform like the Predator platform, the way they would do it is, you know, you'd grab your bow, you would stand up, and then you would pivot your feet around like this to shoot behind you. Now in this scenario, it's not really something you have to worry about because your bow stays away from, you know, it stays away from your bridge and your tether at all times. So you don't really have to worry about it in that scenario. But obviously there are other scenarios in which it could uh, possibly happen. So we're gonna go ahead and test it and see what happens. And our first victim is some 550 cord, regular old paracord. I don't know why anyone would ever use this as a tether, but I am testing it. Okay, this is a little scary. So I've got it rigged up here. I'm a little nervous of how this is going to work. So I am... So my tether is completely slack. You can see my tether completely slack right now. So the idea... I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter. The idea... So it's still slack. The 550 cord is holding... Whoa, <laughs> it's holding all of my weight, 100% of it. You hear that? Whew. It's on there, it's tight. Okay, so it's holding all of my weight. I'm even picking my feet up to where they're just barely on the Predator because when I cut this, I think I'm gonna fall a couple of inches, I think. Also, this is a brand new out of the box slick trick broadhead. All right, here goes nothing. So, fully weighted, 550 cord, test one. What's gonna happen? Oh. <laughs> okay, that was a little scary, but it worked. <laughs> so the 550 cord popped instantly instantly and I barely pushed it I mean like tap 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 
barely tapped it and it just popped. Do not hang from 550 cord. It is not safe. If you touch it with your broadhead, you're going to the ground. Our next victim is a one inch webbing, some one inch webbing from a lone wolf strap. Just a standard, pretty strong webbing, probably rated at 600 pounds or so, I would guess. Um, so I'm gonna tighten up my tether a little bit, my safety tether. It's still very slack, as you can see. It's not holding any weight. All the weight is right here. Got a second rope man and a carabiner here, so I fully expect to fall again. It's a little scary, but I can't really go anywhere, so let's try it. So test two with the webbing. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right, well, that's good to know. Can you see this camera right here? So it cut about a quarter of an inch through but it, the webbing did not give up. So a nick, a nick is, uh, you're not gonna fall. Wow, wow. I don't know if you can see that. It's like halfway through. Can you see that camera? It's like halfway through the webbing and it's still holding. It's halfway through exactly and it's still holding. Wow, three quarters of the way through, guys. I was not expecting that. Look at that. Three quarters of the way through on this webbing and it's still holding me. 100% of my weight, 100%. Now I'm about to fall, but. So there you go. So this cheap webbing, 600 pound-ish webbing, can definitely withstand a broadhead nick going through it and you're probably not gonna fall. Still not safe, do not do it. Dangerous, I am actually surprised how easy it cut. Very little pressure there, very little pressure and uh, it was nicking it. All right, next test, climbing webbing, tubular webbing. It is 100% in, slick, slick trick, climbing webbing, one pass, it cut it, not very deep. Cut it again, not very deep. Cut it again, not very deep. That's three or four, what? That's a whole bunch of passes and it is not cutting it very deep. So I'd say the climbing webbing is pretty darn good. sawing on it you got to saw on it to give it any give halfway through it is not doing anything so there you go so you nicking climbing rated tubular webbing is not going to do hardly anything you got to kind of saw on it to get it to pop all right next we will do some quarter inch am steel blue Let's see what happens. And we're gonna nick it. Nothing. Can't even really tell it's hit. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nicks. Definitely cut through some fibers. All right, so after ten strokes, not a whole lot of damage. Let's hit a little harder. That one cut through a, a whole fiber. I would say we're about a quarter of the way through the rope. I'm gonna hit it harder. That was a pretty hard hit. It's definitely going through it. That was a hard hit. Now I'm gonna hit it hard. Well, I don't think it's gonna go through it. I 
I've hit it about 20 times now and it's still holding strong. Let's saw on it and just see what happens. So, okay, that felt, I felt that one go a little bit. So I've got probably three strands left. Oh, <laughs> I've got one strand left. It's completely unraveled, except for one strand. All but one strand remains. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with it. Let's see, this should be the final blow. Nope, still there, still part of a strand, and that's it. Okay, pretty tough stuff. Next, we're gonna try this HSS safety line. The HSS line here, my tether, my backup tether is completely slack, 100% on the tether. This HSS line, let's see how it does. Almost nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Almost no damage on that, so let's saw on it. Push, 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 push. Man. This is holding just as good as the Am Steel. Oh, there, whoa, that was a big one. Okay, so I guess I just got through the core. That was a big, big pop. All right, and, and that's it. Wow, still holding on. Definitely not gonna break that rope easily. And the next rope is muddy safe line rope. Let's see how it holds. Muddy safe line. This is about a uh, eight and a half millimeter rope. Let's see how it does. Broadhead versus rope. Very good. Very good. Very good. Three good hard pits. Almost no. Just gotten through the outer core, getting into the inner core. Yeah, this is going really good going really good bunch of bunch of hits no real damage harder harder yeah okay so not quite as strong i don't think that one was quite as strong as the last rope that one felt a little a little weaker but that's a lot thinner rope as well so kind of makes sense this is 11 millimeter blue water assault line. This is a very, very strong rope. It's about five years old, five or six years old. Um, I've been using it for a long time. I expect this rope to handle a lot. Tether is very loose. I'm just going to hit this one hard because I know it's going to hold up. Boom, boom, boom. There's no way this stuff will break. That's five or six passes, and then there it goes. So that one broke faster, but I was going at it quite a bit harder. This is a really strong rope. Now this is a rope from Tethered. 6,000 pound rope, nylon rope with an inner core. First one's pretty good. Two, pretty good. Hardly anywhere. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's pretty good. Much like the uh, the other climbing style ropes or the heavily weighted ropes, it's just holding up pretty good. Let's do a hard one. Okay, I'm starting to see the core now. So we're at like 10 passes. I'm cutting into the core now. Into the core. Let's let's do these a little harder. Hard, hard. Man. Okay, so we're well over halfway through now. And we're almost all the way through. I'm impressed with how these things hold up. All these ropes are holding up really good when they're cut almost all the way through. 
Yikes! Had a little too much slack in my tether there. And our last rope whoa, is this uh, hardware store rope. This is just some 3 8 inch nylon rope. It's just a braided rope. There's no core, um, anything like that. So I got a feeling this isn't going to be the strongest of ropes. First pass, pretty good. Pretty good. It's going through it pretty, pretty easy though. It's not a very hard core like some of these other ropes. But even still, I mean a nick, it's gonna hold up just fine. It's holding, it's holding pretty good actually, better than I thought. That one went through pretty good. Yeah, okay. Once it got going, it's cutting pretty easy. And that's all she wrote. Did better than I was expecting, to be honest. I didn't expect it to even do that well. Hey, so the moral of the story is, if you're a saddle hunter, do not use 550 cord as your tether. That is a terrible idea. Don't do it. Webbing, also, I wouldn't recommend using webbing. Um, it obviously held, but it cuts through much, much, much quicker than a traditional climbing style rope. Um, so if from the off chance, it's so unlikely, but if you were to hit it with your tether, or excuse me, with a broadhead, um, the, the ropes or the, the webbing showed wear much faster than any of the ropes, except for 550 cord. Also, don't go to your local hardware store and pick up a rope without a sheath and a core. The, the ropes, all the ropes with the core, they performed about the same. They were all pretty hard to get through. Um, the ropes from Tether, the Blue Water Assault line, the HSS Safety line, all of them performed about the same. I was also impressed with the, uh, the Amsteel, how it held. I was actually expecting it to go faster because it's such a thin rope. I expected it to go a lot faster, but that Dyneema, it just works. It's really heavy. It was hard to get through. I had to push on it hard, and even when it got down to one, one core, one strand left, it still hold, held pretty well. So in the end, go with the tether that is, uh, is um, got a sheath and a core, and uh, go with something with a fiber like a really strong Dyneema that is tough to, uh, tough to cut. Don't just go with a simple nylon rope. Um, unless it has a core, then I think you're, you're better off with something like that. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. I'm really glad that I didn't fall to the ground. That would have been embarrassing. But thank you again for watching. Check out some of my other hunting and fishing videos. And you guys go, go outside and go hiking and biking and camping and fishing and do anything that you can do just to get outdoors.